No. Hey guys, Alex Sturgeon here, Hobby Town Hobby Plex here for another uh, fun Thursday of uh, Hobby Plex After Hours. Um, I got a new speed controller. I'm going to be putting in my uh, my 22, and uh, that's probably about all I'm going to do tonight. Um, but uh, I wasn't planning on getting a new speed controller, and then I did. So um, needed it. It's been a while since I had a new ESC, so we'll, uh, I'll just start. If I see some stuff coming up, you can ask questions, chat with me, whatever. It was fun last week. I think uh, definitely should uh, do it again tonight, so yeah, whatever. Hey, Emerson, flip that switch off. Oh, okay. Give me a second. This one? Oh, that's easy. I always wondered what that did. Yeah. So I got a uh, a new Hobby Wing, um, the 160 amp ESC. Uh, I just felt like my Orion speed controllers were. Um, I've had them for a while, and uh, maybe the technology is. You know, I've driven some other people's cars. I just feel like maybe the technology has kind of moved on. So uh, that's why I got them. It's the newest edition, the D2, the Elite. Trevor says hi to, to Emerson. Emerson's not okay. supposed to be here. He was supposed to be upstairs in bed. and uh, I'm soldering. He doesn't listen to me. So uh, I'm soldering lights. He's, uh, he's basically just found stuff to do just, just to be down here. So I'm trying to decide the best way to get into this. I have a really dull exacto knife. Oh my gosh, that is so dumb. A Gen Eight? Heck yeah. Um, I love the Red Cat Gen Eight. I think it's a cool truck. Um, you can't beat the value for the money if you compare it to. Uh, to a uh, Traxxas uh, Sport. Um, I had a Gen 8 up until uh, about this time last year, actually. No, oh, wait a minute. When did I get rid of my Gen 8? Maybe it was... Anyways, I got rid of it last spring, but I only got rid of it because I traded it for my... Uh, I don't think I can see. <clears throat> I traded one for that, my monster truck, and I couldn't pass up the deal. Um, so it all worked out for everybody, but I would, uh, I would absolutely get a gen eight again. Those are, it, it, it crawled really well. Um, there's lots of cool upgrades for it now, just like, uh, just like any of the other trucks. So yeah, absolutely. Well, Emerson's supposed to be getting ready for bed, not necessarily, uh, oof, or the Enduro. Well, full disclosure, I now have an Enduro and, uh, I love my Enduro. I think, I think there's a trade-off from, uh, portal axles to, uh, behind the axle steering, but just for what my, for what I can do with the Enduro and the fact that, um, so many upgrades made for all the other crawlers, just bolt right on the Enduro. Uh, the Enduro is pretty hard to beat, you know, even out of the box. Out of the box, I'd say, I'd say the Enduro probably, probably crawls a little bit better. But when I had my Gen 8, I, I did like the extra little bit of clearance, but man, that's a tough one. That is, uh, that is definitely a tough one. That'd be hard to choose from. The only other thing about, it depends on what kind of crawling you're going to do. So if you're really looking for like, um, if you're looking for more of like a scale, just a true scale truck, then, then the scout and the body that it comes on is, is going to be more of a match. But if you are more into 
really being able to squeeze up to stuff and have that approach angle be really good and uh, have kind of a shorter, um, uh, not a wheelbase, but just like a, a more maneuverable truck then I think the, uh, I think the Enduro is, uh, is probably better at that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Enduro is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's hard for me to tell somebody to do one or the other, but just my own personal experience, the Enduro is pretty great. The first thing you want to do though is uh, chuck the bumpers. If you get the trail walker, um, the, the bumpers are fine, but if you get the Enduro, uh, Sendero, just chuck those bumpers and pick out something cool and go with that. The funnest part about having my Enduro was, is uh, just all the stuff that you can do. Ah. I just got a thing on there. All right, so I'm taking the uh, electronics tray out of my 22. And I'm just going to leave my receiver um, in there. What, uh, you guys that are on, anybody, uh, anybody see the new Axial trucks that came out today? The, the little SCX, uh, 24s, the new bodies. We, uh, back ordered a whole bunch of them, um, for both stores actually. So, uh, we should get them, uh, as soon as they come out. But I wasn't really sure what to think of those things when they first came out. But uh, now that I've seen them in action and and I know that how popular they've been, um, I'm really looking forward to uh, even more bodies. It's really cool um, what they can do with that stuff. I think there's a dude on 402 Club that got kind of the scoop on that. He's, he like found a picture of it from some show somewhere and uh, was able to to show everybody probably a little earlier than um, what Axial probably wanted. Okay. I need my southern iron. Oh, okay. I don't know why these wires aren't sticking. So, um, I'm just gonna unsolder. Uh, Matt, I think they're gonna be. I think 119, 120, somewhere in that range. If they're the same price as the other ones. Where's my solder at? Sorry. Oh, I forgot. That's a good question that I, uh, it's weird when you don't have a computer in front of you to, to look up stuff. I have a computer in front of me, but it's, it's video, it's videoing right now. So, um, I do want to make a, a video on, on soldering. I, it's, we get a lot of questions about soldering and, uh, this is not the best soldering iron in the whole wide world. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of old, but it'll work for now. But uh, uh, I'm a, I always kind of preach, uh, um, you know, uh, pre-tinning everything. So we're definitely going to do that when I, when I solder on our, uh, our new speed controller here to my car. Hey, what'd you do with that wet rag? It's on the floor. There we go. Shrink wrap on. Whoops. 
definitely keeping the tip clean is pretty important. Um, that's a life lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm kind of bummed out, man, because my uh, my man cave here. So I had this uh, TV all set up, and uh, <laughs> my wife and I changed our we we we, um, we cut cable, and so we're just going to use uh, streaming services, and. Uh, my TV down here is not a smart TV, so I can't I, I can't watch YouTube right now. Normally, I'd have like something cool playing up there that I could look over and see, but now it's just quiet down here. And I don't want to turn on any music because then I, I'm afraid YouTube will kick me off or something like that. So, we'll kick you off. We'll just get copyright. Yeah, we'll just get a copyright claim or whatever. All right. So, so right now the uh, the tray is here like that, and I'm gonna get rid of this Orion. Yeah, I know we had a Roku, actually. I think right now we're using um, <clears throat> our TVs are smart TVs now, so that's what we got going on. But um, so I have this Orion speed controller. By the way, if uh, anybody wants to buy an Orion R10, I'll have a couple for sale. I think I'm gonna go uh, completely hobby wing. It's it's good to have one brand of ESC because um, they all have their own uh, um, uh, what do they call that uh, like programming box, and so I've had the Orion programming box for so long that I. Uh, I didn't want to change because I didn't want to have to buy another programming box, but I think the time has come because these, these Orion speed controllers are, were extremely reliable. Um, I've never had one blow up on me before. And, uh, but, and there's probably firmware updates. I just haven't, I've never done it. Um, but if you think about it, I think I had my first Orion R10 in like 2013. And then I ran for Novak for quite a long time. Uh, well, up until 2016. And then in 2016, um, I got uh, I got Orion stuff again. So, I mean, it's been, you know, three or four years. And I just feel like it was time to try maybe some of the newer stuff, um, the newer firmwares and, and, you know, the 32-bit or whatever it is. And whatever that stuff is. I honestly just look at the box and go, okay, that's good. So there it is. That's my old um, Orion. And I've actually, uh, um, the stock Vortex V10 uh, doesn't have a motor limit. Well, it does, it's like 5.5. Five. So, but it just doesn't have any timing. So you can't program any timing into it, which I personally don't like using timing. It always makes my cars feel weird. And that's one thing I'm looking forward to now is being, being able to precisely try timing um, in my new speed controllers. So uh, more precisely, I guess. So um, this is uh, what we used when Emerson ran stock, but then I've also used it in all my modified racing just because it was cheaper. These are, uh, I think, 139, and the original ones were 199 for the R10 Pro, and then they got the new, the new Orion ones, but they're ungodly expensive, and I'm not gonna spend that much. So we'll uh, put that in the pile. So we got this today. Paxton, I think, um, I don't know yet. I got to stew on that a little bit. I don't know how much I would sell it for. I'm going to end up with three of them. I think I'm going to leave the one in my speed controller, uh, speed controller, uh, in my touring car. I probably will leave that one alone um, for now. But I'm, I'm definitely going to have this in my, my mod off-road car. And then 
eventually I worked my way to um, having them in my in Emerson's, so we can both uh, have the same you know speed controllers, so we can share ideas and stuff about what needs to be about settings and stuff like that. So I got to think about how I want this in the car. So the it sits like that and probably probably that way. Shrink wrap again. So this is the uh, the uh, the XR10 Pro, uh, the 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 elite version. Um, we're probably going to get all these for our cars eventually. Um, I'm not a sponsored driver or anything like that, so um, I have to pay for everything. And even at my discount, I can get it to Plex. Um, these are pretty expensive, so right now I just got one. Um, so the the uh, the XR10 Pro is 160 amp ESC, and I pretty much always use these uh, the Protec batteries that we sell. Um, I really like the 4900. Um, it's not too heavy, uh, provides plenty of uh, of runtime for mod racing. Even like eight or ten minute mains wouldn't be an issue. And uh, the C rating on the one I'm using right now is 100. But I think the new Protec batteries, the new because they 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 have um, part numbers that go by year, and all the all the twenties that are coming out, I think they're I think they're all like 110 C batteries, maybe 120. Here's the thing though about C rating, quite a lot of it's bull crap. So uh, uh, there really is no standard for measuring C rates. So Generally speaking, companies can put whatever they feel like on it, and a lot of times that that this C rate is more of the burst rate than the actual like steady C rate. Um, still, for racers, the higher the better, and you can at least I can tell if 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 I had a twenty a twenty C battery and I ran a hundred C battery back to back. I would totally be able to tell and the battery would be a little bit cooler. Um, however, if you had say uh, like a 60 or 70 C battery and ran it back to back with a hundred C battery, you might be hard pressed to tell a difference. And that's just, I'm not an engineer. I never claimed to be an engineer. Um, but I think cars can only draw so much. So at a certain point, that, that C rating kind of becomes pointless. Um, that's not to say that a lot of the higher C rating batteries aren't better than some of the lower C batteries. It's just that you have to kind of watch what you buy because a lot of times uh, those, those C rates can be bullcrap. So that's my uh, spiel of the night about C rates. Now, milliamp hours, those numbers can kind of be fudged with as well, but uh, it's a lot harder to fudge a, a, a milliamp hour than it is a C rate. So, Roar tried, I believe they tried, they're, they tried to, uh, they tried to have like a standard practice for C rating to make it uh, um, measurable, but I don't think that's ever like worked out. So, well, Paxton, what do you want to know about setting timing on a motor? Because I can just tell you that right now, if you want. That's what these are for. Back and forth, chat with me for an hour or so, hour and a half, whenever I feel like you know going to bed. So ask me, what do you want to know about timing? What do you mean setting timing?
Okay. So if you're using a fixed timing motor, I mean, honestly, there's not really a whole lot you could do about setting timing. But um, so this is bad. I don't want. I don't know if I got a motor hanging around. Do I have an extra motor hanging around? I don't think I do. No, I don't. Okay. Well, we'll try it. Okay. So if you get a motor with with uh, if you get a motor with timing, um, a spec motor. Uh, a lot of times on a motor, there's a sweet spot, and that's what these motor. Um, hi, Dylan. Most of the time, there's these. Uh, uh, oh, geez, not dynos necessarily, but they're they're like um, uh, like G-force and stuff have a, has a motor box that you can hook up, and it'll it'll read like amp draw and uh, KV rate. Um, the actual measurable timing in the motor. And what you're really looking for is about a six amp amp draw, generally speaking for spec. Um, but what I always did was I looked for when the motor stopped being efficient. So you could see that, um, you could see that, uh, uh, that efficiency stay put and then all of a sudden it would drop. That's where I would normally set my timing at on spec motors. We're talking 17.5, 13.5, 21.5. Um, there's not necessarily a magic number because each motor is different. But generally speaking, you don't want a spec motor at zero timing. It'll be slow and it won't be any fun to drive. The more timing uh, a motor has, um, generally speaking, the faster it is, but also the hotter it gets. So I'm not going to get into the weeds about how it works electronically because, to be honest with you, I have no idea. I, I just know more timing, hotter, faster. So you're you're looking for that spot where uh, um, you can put up with with the heat, and the motor won't drop off later in the run. And generally speaking, that's about 160 degrees. So um, crank that timing up on a spec motor. Usually, do at least 40 degrees of timing, and then go up. You can go up from there. If your motor is getting too hot, if it's getting 200 or something like that, you pull it back or you change your gearing. I'm sure there's a, a lot better motor gurus than I am um, that could tell you uh, even more succinct how that is. But uh, that's one of the reasons why I race mod. I don't like racing spec. <laughs> if I can help it. The nice thing about USGT at the Plex is it's it's a fixed timing motor. So everybody's the same, supposedly. So um but like my modified here, it's got uh, it's got 30 degrees of timing, and uh, that's all my mod needs. You know, you don't want to mod at zero either. But generally, spec motors run a lot higher, um, 40, 50, even 60 degrees, depending on what motor you get. So um, nice. Um, uh, so first things first. Uh, my first RC um, was uh, technically a Radio Shack car, and I don't even remember what it was because a friend of mine ran it over with his good RC car. Um, but my actual first RC car uh, was uh, this one. This is the uh, Tamiya Falcon, and uh, my mom bought it for me, and I put it together. Um, we didn't paint it this color. It was a ugly lime green and orange. And, uh, but this was my first car. Um, my cousin Aaron took it out and, uh, got it wet and ruined everything in it. <laughs> so, uh, that took a lot. I used to break these all the time. These are, um, uh, ceramic, uh, like heat sink capacitors or whatever. Um, if you broke those, your car wouldn't run. So this was, uh, but I have one now and it's never going to be ran ever again. It's just a shelf queen. Um, so motor turns versus KV. 
Um, essentially, what you need to know there is that motor turns are called uh, turns on most censored motors. Um, that's how they're measured. And that's because racers like me, going back to brush motors, we know, um, that's what we know, we know turns. So we, back in the day, a 27 turn single used to be a stock. Anything lower than that was uh, was modified. Well, they kind of kept that the same. So anything, you know, a 17.5 is stock, anything lower than that is, is considered a mod. Um, they, they still have KV ratings. The higher the KV rating number, the faster it is. So um, a 17.5 uh, censored brushless motor should be in the range of, I, I think it's like 2250 KV, right? Um, and then uh, like my my 5.5 that I'm running here, I believe it's, it's upwards towards, um, let's see. I, it's I, without going back and looking at the box, I think it's like 8,000 kV. I mean, it's really it's up there. So, um, again, kV is also one of those things where, uh, as far as I know, there's not necessarily a set standard for measuring kV. So you could have brand A's 3,000 and brand B's 3,000, and one could be faster than the other, um, just because they 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 kind of fudge their numbers or whatever a little bit. Um, but usually they're pretty close, you know, like a, a 3,500 Traxxas motor is going to be about the same speed as a 3,800 Castle motor, give or take. That's all you really need to know. The, the main difference is uh, sensor list motors are usually measured in KV. Censored motors are usually measured in turns. That's, that's all it really is. I hope that cleared up some confusion. And then is the Rustler 4x4 VXL a reliable RC? Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Well, the turns is, is uh, yeah, the turn is basically the same thing. So a lower, a lower KV motor, um, is kind of the same deal. It has more horsepower, but less torque. But the one thing about brushless motors is it's a little bit different from the old brush motors. Um, the, uh, uh, the old brush days, you know, if you had a, a, a five turns, you know, quint, it wouldn't have near the torque that, um, you know, a 12 turn quint would have if you're measuring them the same. But brushless motors, I think, are a little bit different. I think all in all, it's just, it's easier to remember the lower the turn motor, the faster it is in everything. My 5.5 still has plenty of torque. I, it's just, uh, you know, you have to gear it a lot lower because of the, because of how fast it is, but it still has gobs of torque. So in my opinion, you don't need to worry about worrying about hey, horsepower versus torque in a, as much in a brushless motor as we used to in, in an old, um, the brush days. I think it's just a lower turn motor or a higher turn KV motor is just faster in everything, right? Um, to a, but to a point. So uh, we, we use lower turn, um, lower turn KVs when we're using a higher cell count, you know, because then you start getting into heat and all that other stuff. So, I don't know. Like I said, I'm no engineer. I just know the stuff mostly from experience. I've never been a in the weeds numbers type person. I just, I just kind of know how it goes. So I hope that's a good explanation. Hope I'm not just blabbing away. Anyways. I just got a friend request. <laughs> um, I did want to mention something really cool that uh, that happened over the, the weekend. Um, last weekend, 
we had uh, some local guys. I call them local. You know, a few of them are from Des Moines, but um, they did really good at this thing called the Reedy Race. And uh, um, Tom Rinnernecht, he's been a, a summer series champ a couple times now, and uh, he won a uh, four-wheel drive open at the Reedy race, which means he gets invited to play with the big dogs um, in the invite. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then Mason Fuller, um, he made the A-mains in both the open, so he'll be invited back no matter what for the open class next year. There's a possibility of him making the A-main at the modified national, so it might be a new point. And then um, his brother Caden did pretty good. Um, our our guys Aiden Olson and uh, Mitchell Pavel, um, they both went. And it's just from their Facebook, it looks like they had a pretty good experience. Um, so it was good to see them getting out wearing shorts in February or January, whatever it is. And uh, um, I think uh, Alex Vanderbeek also made uh, the A mains. Um, and his brother Owen went and it sounds like he had a good time. So, uh, quite a few locals went out to California this last week and, and, and did really good. So as a, uh, I kind of, kind of feel like it's almost like a, uh, proud dad moment, even though I'm not their dad, but still, um, just to see them do well. Um, what well, country usually wins worlds. Well, it depends on which worlds, but if we're talking off-road worlds, I mean, most of the time it's going to be an American driver. That's changed a little bit. Um, there's a lot more European guys that are um, way faster um, and uh, are always a threat at some of the big uh, uh, world events. Um, but if you just look at the last couple worlds, you know, we had um, uh, Spencer Rifkin. Uh, winning uh, two-wheel drive. I think uh, I'm pretty sure Bruno Coelho, who is Port Portuguese, so he's a Euro guy. I'm pretty sure he won four-wheel drive. Um, so that splits it between uh, USA and Europe. And the year before that, uh, Ryan Mayfield won uh, two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. He's, he's an American. Um, the year before that, it was Spencer Rivkin winning um, – and then it was uh, um, um, Bruno Coelho went in four-wheel drive. So, again, uh, I think Bruno has been one of the main European drivers to really climb up there. Um, not in two-wheel drive yet, but uh, at least in four-wheel drive. So, a uh, long time ago, it was um, Craig – is it Craig Drescher? Is it Drescher? Oh, crap. Now I can't remember his name. Uh, dude, I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, but a British guy won <laughs> for a team associated. And now I can't remember his name. and It's going to kill me. Tonight at, new, at midnight, I'm going to be like, ah, those guys on YouTube are going to think I'm stupid for not remembering who that was. Um, but normally, when we're talking 10-scale uh, electric, it's going to be an American driver usually. At least the A-Main will be filled mostly with, the, with them. Um, eight scale is a little different. Um, it's been more of a, uh, a mixed bag. Um, there's been a lot of different nationalities winning the world, but, uh, yeah. So that's a good question. I like trying to rehash my, uh, my memory of that stuff and how that's supposed to work. Especially when I'm wrong, like that would suck. Uh, what brand is winning short course? Uh, depends on what, what, uh, class. So four wheel drive short course, definitely techno. Uh, I think their, uh, their short course, their four wheel drive short course truck is, is pretty phenomenal. And I think that's why you see it like our techno series. Uh, the majority of the guys running pro four short course truck will be, uh, running the techno. Uh, two wheel drive. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty mixed bag. Um, I would say associated really has the, the handle with their SC five. So 
or two wheel drive. So how many cars on my wall behind me? Um, how many are there? Uh, 14. Fourteen. Uh, there's probably like eleven classic cars and a couple cars that I'm, I'm still racing that are on the wall behind me. Um, my most prized possession, RC-wise, there's a few of them. Um, the the one I brought up last week is my uh, signed Yolosi Junior JRXT. Um, but. Uh, um, <laughs> There's also uh, just a couple things of uh, memorabilia here. I'll show. So, um, I got that sign. Uh, it's a Team Losi. It's kind of bright in the screen. You can't really see it. Um, shut that off, will you? There you go. So, uh, I got that sign from um, Dan Kelly, who owned uh, RC Motorsport. Uh, back in the day, they got that from this guy named Howard Bussey, who uh, actually had a track here in Omaha for a little while, um, a carpet track, um, long time ago, like like late 90s, uh, early 2000s. But he was a sign maker. That was his main gig. And uh, he made that for Dan. And then uh, I ended up getting um, I ended up getting uh, getting it from him when RC Motorsport uh, went away. So uh, that's one of my main prize possessions right there so um other than cars so like i said uh last week if you look at my watch my video from last week um my jerex t eh, right there uh it's mint condition and signed by gil Osi jr so it's uh it's one of my one of my uh definitely one of my um, um most prized rc possessions so Um, I did build all the shelves. I'm pretty impressed. I wasn't going to start doing this until I did that. So, uh, um, yeah, yep. Um, Jeffrey, um, yep, it's new. Uh, yeah, it's fun. It's something I'm going to try to do every Thursday and uh, hopefully it grows. Hopefully it grows the channel. So, um, hopefully I can answer questions without rambling along a whole lot. Um, I'll try to always have something to work on if, if I can get to it. Matt, I used to drive for uh, Team Associated um, uh, uh, from 2004 to 2006. And then uh, in 2006, I decided to switch over to TLR, which is kind of where I always wanted to be. And uh, I drove um, for TLR up until 2017. Yeah, I think it was uh, 2017. So um, that was a great experience. And uh, um, it was great being a, a TLR driver. Um, it's a, It was a life goal. So I'm glad I was able to get that out of the way. Um, I was never going to be a national level driver. and uh, But um, I was and I still am, you know, a regional level driver. I think if, uh, if I go to a race... Um, travel to a race. I think I'm always a threat to uh, make the A main for sure. And uh, every once in a while, pull off a win, but it doesn't happen that often these days, but that's okay. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Um, I just enjoy the hobby. It's part of my life. So I, I, I can't get away from it now. Um, I can't, you know, stop doing it completely. Even if I wanted to, I think I would go crazy. So um, but yeah, being a TLR driver was, was a big deal for me. And I'm, I'm glad. Um, they allowed me the opportunity um, when it came up. So I will say it's really nice being able to drive anything I want nowadays. Um, part of the reason why uh, I wanted to kind of just uh, be regular Joe and, and be able to run whatever I wanted to was kind of for this. So I could have more experience and be able to, uh, to utilize that at work better just to, just to know um, 
just to know things. I just wanted to know more than one brand. So that was, uh, that was kind of the deal with that. <laughs> yeah. I try not to race stuff that, that, um, I try not to race in, race in classes that, um, will make it, uh, no fun for other people. So, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we, uh, we were doing stock slash and I felt that was different. Like that was fun because everybody was the same, uh, speed at least. It just came down to driving ability. And I think, uh, I think it was a blast to race with guys like Bob Hamilton and stuff. And, uh, you could actually, I could see those guys really progress from when we first started doing stock slash again to towards the end of it. I mean, there were times I just straight up got beat by those guys. So, uh, that was, that was a good time. And, uh, but you won't ever see me race anymore. Um, uh, at least not for the time being anything like stock buggy, um, uh, pro four short course truck, um, you know, um, anything, anything like that. Uh, 13, five, uh, stadium truck. I have no interest in anyway. So I'm, I'm all about two wheel drive buggies. So that's why I race mod, race mod two wheel drive. And if you see me with an eight scale, it's usually uh, e-buggy expert e-buggy. So I might bring my e-buggy out one of these days. I haven't really decided when yet. I need to get some tires from J Concepts. Yeah, slash spec was fun. In fact, um, Trevor uh, wants to get um, slash spec going again for Friday nights. I think that'd be a good filler class. It'd be a good way for some people to move up out of plex spec too, if they could get into uh, stock slash. So um, I told Trevor that it's kind of up to him. He needs to um, get out there and try to promote it again so we can get it going. Um, Cause stock slash was fun. You could just walk upstairs and buy $189 tracks of slash, go downstairs and race it and know that everybody has the same equipment. Um, everybody's motor might not be the same cause one might be older than the other, but, but yeah, it was a good time. And uh, I think it kind of helped, uh, uh, kickstart our off-road program a little bit again there because for a little while there some of the kids had gotten older and kind of discovered other things you know uh, college girls you know cars real cars I think uh, you know we were kind of lacking in, in turnout and then we started family Friday off-road and we had uh, tracks of spec class um, you know uh, slash spec that uh, that really helped kind of kind of jumpstart the whole deal again. So, um, yeah, I agree. Slashback was super fun. No, sorry, Nate. I got to, um, I want to, uh, um, uh, I want to get this new speed controller in and then I want to test it tomorrow night. So, I won't be racing e-buggy tomorrow. Maybe sometime in February. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, that's Bob. Ha <laughs> ha. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Yeah, we need to get the Wienermobile out. Uh, my slash isn't spec anymore. And it might be a drag car no. in the spring. No. I'm thinking. No. So we'll see. No. Emerson's telling me no, but uh, yeah. no. This is the cool stuff. Emerson is uh, working on the super slash actually right now. Um, he's putting lights on it and uh, you know, Uh, I mean, of course you can. Um, yeah, you can always, uh, call and try to ask, uh, me for anything. Um, uh, when I, before I worked at hobby town, I used to uh, pretty much call and go, Hey, is Tim there? And then they would say, Nope. And I'd say, oh, okay. And I'd hang up. So <laughs> I know how that goes, but, uh, uh, of course you can. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, a lot of times, um, 
it's easy for me to feel like uh, it's easy for me to um, uh, help multiple people at once. Uh, so don't ever think you're, you're overwhelming me or anything like that. Even if, um, even if I look like I'm being overwhelmed, so it's fine. It all works out. I take prescription strength, anxiety meds just for that occasion. So it all works out. I'll be right back. Excuse me. Kickstart burp. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, Tim's been on, Tim's been at the Plex since 98, 1998. He was the manager of the Maple Street store. So the Plex is the Maple Street store. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure Tim's been with uh, with uh, our hobby town, the Omaha hobby town, since 1998. We'll find out because he's going to be on our podcast. Um, so we're recording our podcast Monday, and uh, um, it'll be uh, posted probably that Thursday or Friday because uh, my my sister's company edits it and makes it sound good and everything. Uh, but that's one of the things we'll be asking him is how he got uh, in with um, uh, the Omaha Hobby Town, and uh, he can tell you know about how the Plex came to be and everything. So um, yeah, Tim Ski's going to be on our podcast uh, that'll come out next week. So if you guys are watching um, that know about it, so the uh, the hobby the, the Hobby Plex Show podcast um, should be able to search for it. Um, I know I found it on SoundCloud um stitcher um uh you can find it on podbean and you should be able to find it on apple i think my sister said it's on there so um if you haven't done so yet listen to the first episode of the hobby plex show um that's basically where we kind of introduce ourselves and kind of get get into the format of the show um it's out there right now and then uh we'll have the new one on next week so it's uh, once a month, first week of the month. Yeah, we might be able to do more, but for now, that's that's what it is. So, uh, recommend to use for carpet off road. So if you have a um, team associated um, and you're using sway bars. Well, it probably doesn't matter if you're using sway bars or not, but I have Emerson at um, 45 front and uh, 40 in the back for carpet. Um, my low C car here um, is at 30, no, 40 and 35. So uh, best selling basher, that's easy. That's uh, that's the tracks of slash. Um, although the, uh, the Arma granites, and centons, um, those are creeping up there. They're starting to to kind of um, cut in to uh, to the tracks of stuff. So the Arma Arma cars are really good. Um, plus they're four wheel drive, so you can pick up a two wheel drive slash for 189 without a battery. You can get a four wheel drive uh, Arma car like the Granite or Centon for 219 bucks with a battery. So you know. Uh, it's pretty easy for people to, to, to look at those two price points and go, whoa, maybe we should give this Arma stuff a shot. And, and that's what's been going on um, recently. So it's still the Slash by far, but uh, the Arma brand and um, their, their cars have definitely been um, kind of squeezing in on the territory a little bit of what Traxxas has to offer. So. Okay. Good night. Emerson's going to bed. Ugh, sorry. Uh, why only red cat crawlers? So the Plex really only carries red cat for the crawling 
uh, line. Um, they present a really good value and we really haven't seen any problems. Um, but uh, we haven't picked up any of their other cars yet for several reasons. Um, the main one is we like to carry parts of everything that we sell. So um, that's kind of why we have three main brands of, of ready to run vehicles. So we have ECX and that's your really starter stuff, which is still good stuff, but it's, it's price point is, is lower and you can kind of see the cars get a little sloppier, a little bit easier. And then you have um, Arma and Traxxas who have, like I said, different things. You can get Arma four wheel drive stuff at a really good price point. And then of course we got to carry Traxxas because any store that doesn't carry Traxxas probably won't be in business for very long. So, um, uh, so for, for that reason, we don't have a whole lot of room to add another brand and carry all the parts for it. So that's a really big reason why we don't carry any other brand, whether it be Red Cat or, or, um, any of those other ones out there, um, that are offered by other distributors, you know, their main brands. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not a knock on red cat. It's just that our, from what we've seen is a lot of that stuff we see every Christmas, you know, parents have bought that stuff online because it's cheap. They type in, you know, RC car to Google and they think they're getting their kid a good value. They get it and they open it up and something's wrong out of the box or it just straight up doesn't work. Um, you know, until we stop seeing that, we might be open to any other brand, not just, not just Red Cat, but, um, a lot of those, you know, Exceed RC is a really good example. That stuff's garbage. And, uh, unfortunately we keep seeing it and it's because you can just go online, you can see it and, and, you know, they come in frustrated and then, you know, we try to try to turn them on to something that's going to be more available parts, but also just know that we're, they're going to be able to walk out the door and have it be happy. Um, so we're just a little picky in that way, uh, for cars that we carry. We just don't want to, the main thing is I've been doing this so long. The worst thing ever is to have somebody mad at you, um, because you told them what they were buying was going to work and then they go home and it doesn't work. So, you know, yeah, that's all. But not having the room is a lot of it, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, anyways, so uh, while I've been talking, um, so I got my, uh, my speed controller plate back in, and there's my speed controller, and I put my receiver back in. And uh, the next thing I got to do is figure out the wiring. So, so that'll be fun. Yeah, that was my first thought when I saw the Corrali cars too. I was like, whoa, like that really looks like an Arma car. Yeah, I, uh, I, I caught that as well. So eh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, but I was, uh, I wasn't shocked because stuff in this industry doesn't really shock me anymore, but I was like, whoa, that's, that's really close to, uh, to Arma. <laughs> Chinese, damn it. <laughs> yeah, Jackson, you did really good, man. I think, uh, it looked like you were enjoying um, I think you were enjoying carpet off-road. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah, I don't think we'll be carrying the Corrali cars at the Plex. 
it's weird because Corrali was uh, um, uh, Corrali used to make these really top notch uh, touring cars. That's that was their thing. They were uh, on road brand. Um, so really, just to see them have a off road car period was kind of weird in general. Makes me think that it might not be Corrali Corrali anymore. Like maybe the name got purchased or whatever. I'm sure it's something like that. Um, yeah, the uh, uh, we just got in. Oh, that's what I missed on the What's New Wednesday. We just got in the uh, the Dynamite Motors for the Mini T. So, um, yeah, we just got those things in. So we'll uh. We'll see how fast they can make those little uh, mini tees go. So this is what Emerson likes to do. He uh, he likes to take my tools and then not put them back. Which is kind of annoying. Yeah, dude. Uh, so I haven't shaken for a really long time racing RC cars, but, uh, that mod main the last minute, uh, I actually was shaking at the end. So, um, that's how, you know, it was a good close race because I hadn't won in a while and it was, uh, it was nice, but I was shaking like crazy. So I can, I can feel I can feel what, uh, what what you're talking about. The last time I really got the shakes bad was uh, the first time that I took my my plane up. I had um, uh, E Flight Commander. And it was way faster than my trainer plane. And uh, one of the first times I took that up, I couldn't stop shaking while I was flying it because I was so afraid I was going to crash it. The adrenaline was uh, was really up there. Yeah, Trevor's right. Uh, if you're going to do the the brushless system on the Mini T, you have to have your own good three channel radio. Can't use a stock radio. So good call. I think uh, um, I think that's the way that we would uh, we would race Mini Ts. Um, I'd like to see us race mini tees out on the dirt. Um, I think it'd be fun to have a, a stock and a mod class and that's it. So you have a mod class where you can do whatever you want, you know, rush or brushless motor fast. And then you have a box stock mini tee class. And Emerson's actually, um, Emerson has, uh, um, laid out a layout in the middle of the dirt oval, which is where we plan on building the mini T track next week. I'm building, um, well not building Well, I'm, I'm redoing parts of the track for the techno series and I'm going to try to scrounge up some dirt, uh, so that we can actually finish our mini T track. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun and maybe we can find a way to, uh, to get going. Um, yeah, so basically, um, it's uh, the changes to the to the dirt track for for next week um, are going to be pretty substantial. Um, the long lane, uh, the long lane and back won't be there. Well, actually, I have a picture. I can just show you guys. I draw everything out. So 
You can see that. You can see that. So basically, uh, straight away, and we're going to go all the way to the wall, and then you're going to drop in. There's going to be a tr uh, big jump here. There's going to be a jump here. You're going to come up. That roller that's there is going to stay. And then this, uh, I have an idea for something, but I don't know if it's going to work out. So um, don't look at that. <laughs> and then uh, this back here is going to be flat again. There's not going to be that big dip that's right here. And then this is all staying the same. So that's changing. That's staying the same. Shouldn't take me too long. I'm going to go in uh, Monday night after we get done um, with the podcast and uh, try to move as much dirt as I can. And then uh, Tuesday next week, there'll be no off-road racing, practice, nothing. The track will be closed. And uh, um, I should be done that night with everything. I'll try to take a video uh, as well and get it up on YouTube. Um, but it uh, shouldn't take me that long, I don't think. So hopefully uh, RBY, that, uh, that answers that for you. I always try to change something um, every round just so... It keeps it fresh, so. Yeah, Jackson, that wall is also very expensive. So um, one day we might have one of those cool, crazy walls, but uh, uh, not right now. It's just uh, not in the cards because of how much, um, how much wood it would take to, to make it. So. Um, you're right, though. They are super cool. And I, I have a pretty good idea on uh, on how I would make it. So, yeah, Trevor, you just got to come out Tuesday, or uh, unless you work. But, uh, um, yeah, come out Tuesday after school, and uh, I'll put you to work. So, um Absolutely. Uh, when do I think Traxxas is coming out with a real crawler for competition? I don't know. I mean, I think you can take a T-Rex 4 and take, take the bumpers off the big bumpers they give you and go to a, a slimmer body, something that's, you know, they Traxxas has done a really good job of keeping everything scale. Um, but I think that if you take the truck itself and you put on um, a more slim body and change the bumpers out to something um, a lot skinnier, I think you'll find uh, that the T-Rex 4 can do really good, especially with a good set of tires. Can't forget that. So get some Hyrax, uh, Predator compound or, or landmines from J Concepts, I think you'd be surprised how good uh, TRX4 can actually do. I think most most of the ones that I've seen at the Plex, um, they usually keep the stock bodies on them, and, and that's cool and all, but they're huge. You know, they're they're not really, um, and they're heavy. So I think if you take that body off and you put on, you know. Uh, you put on like a, a high racks body or a forerunner or something uh, and take off all that weight. I bet you they do really good. So it's uh it's 10 Oh four. Um, so just like last week, I think I'm going to do uh, like an hour and a half. So uh, I'll be on for another 26 minutes and I'll shut her down at 10 30. So, it's kind of cool. We've had, uh, I think at one point we had like 20 something people watching. That's pretty cool. Um, those of you that stuck with me so far, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. See, I agree. I, I think, 
I think a TRX four, if it's done right, I think you can you can definitely uh, make it very capable for crawling comps. Does anybody uh, know why um, uh, solder always goes to where your face is, no matter what you do? Have you ever noticed that when you're soldering something that no matter what, where you put your face at, the solder always comes right to you? I hate that. It's annoying. Yeah, I think uh, I think a T-Rex four with uh, some of the brass stuff up front, like the um, um, the portal covers, and uh, just some weight, some extra weight in the front, just like anything else that I've ever built. I think uh, I think that I think it's T-Rex four is really good. I almost bought one. Instead of my Enduro, I was going to get a T-Rex 4 Sport. And then I was lucky enough to get a um, an Enduro um, from, from Team Associated to uh, to, tr to check out. And, you know, I haven't really looked back since. But I was this close to having a T-Rex 4 Sport. Uh, difference between DX5C and DX5R. Um, well, uh, I'm pretty sure the DX5, the DX5R Pro or whatever they call it now, um, has a faster, uh, frame rate. So I think it can do down to the 5.5 frame rate, if I'm not mistaken. Um, ergonomically, it's just a lot different. It, it carries the same, uh, DX6. R, um, you know, feel to it, and uh, I think um, the pro version is supposed to be a lot more sensitive to your trigger and steering wheel inputs, even over the previous version of the DX5R and like a DX5C. Whenever I drive a Spectrum, a car on a Spectrum radio, I always feel like it's kind of like delayed. And uh, and just kind of wandery, and I think the the higher up in price you go, uh, the less that feels. Still can't beat a Sanwa though, MT44 or M17 or MT4S or something like that. <laughs> My chair. Okay, so I got my uh, got my wire soldered in, so I'm making progress here. Not the cleanest solder job in the whole wide world, but um, better than most. Yeah, the MT44 is a rocking radio, dude. Uh, you know. You get the you get the good stuff when you get that. Yeah, if you've been running if you've been running the lower end radios your whole life and you and you get a and you get something like an MT44 or even an M12, if you can find a used M12S, dude, it'll change your life. You'll wonder what the hell you were doing the whole time. You'll be like, dude, Alex was right. 
be like, I told you, I usually am right. Fingers hurt. Thanks. It's kind of fun. Just get to hang out and chat for an hour and a half or so. Outside of the store. So you don't have to worry about getting interrupted by people who want me to help them with their team acts or something. Um, the chat's going crazy. So is that, uh, Jackson, you're, that's why you're trying to sell this TTO two. Anybody wants to buy it's my TTO two. Uh, Jackson has one. Oh, dude, where have you been, man? Unfortunately, Tuesday nights kind of went. <laughs> we don't even race anymore on Tuesdays. But uh, Friday nights on the dirt are still hopping. Yeah, I hope I hope I'm able to answer people's questions though. At least to the extent of my knowledge that I think I know. Sometimes I don't know stuff. I'll be right back. So how about uh, how about that race last night, huh? On the carpet. Yeah, I know, uh, Dave. Um, he hasn't been around either, so uh, you should come out on Fridays. Friday nights are hopping. There's uh, tons of kids. Lily would have a good time. We had uh, uh, 39 Plex Speckers last Friday. Um, Trevor, uh, he's one of the dudes on here chatting. He, uh, he runs the races for us on Tuesday, on Fridays. And uh, Family Friday Off-Road is, uh, has really uh, kind of uh, made RC racing at the Plex fun again. Um, you know, it's all just a bunch of people who don't care. They, they, they're glad to be there course you know they're going to care if they finish or where they finish but nobody's going to get all pissed off and weird if they don't so at least i haven't seen that yet so um family friday off-road is a lot of fun that'd be a good night to come out and uh, for lily it'd only be five bucks unless you're racing then it for her it'd be free so we need to get some more pro four guys out there um to fill in on fridays too it'd be nice to see family friday um uh uh, have a pro four and an eight scale class like it used to be uh, just so the plexers could see, you know, drivers on that next level and what they can, what they can become. So. Yeah. The techno series is uh, our series races have been pretty good. It, it was a good idea. So. Um to get those going finally. Every once in a while, somebody gets a, uh, a burn in their bonnet or whatever they call that, but not very often anymore. Most of the people that, uh, most of the people that used to get all upset and stuff at, at races, um, they don't really come around anymore. So it's, uh, the Plex racing scene's been in a really good spot the last, uh, I'd say the last couple of years, but 
for sure the last year or so. So it is what it is. I'm going to heat shrink my heat shrink here. Yeah, that's what, um, uh, Peter, that's what we're trying to prevent. Um, you know, the hobby plex in Omaha has been a really, um, I think a really good hobby store which is one of the reasons why we're open. I mean, why we're still open. It's been, uh, um, I think, I think the, uh, our hobby town has been in Omaha for uh, 20, 26, no, more longer than that. It would have been 20, uh, no, maybe 26 or 27 years. So, and the hobby plex has been there for 15 of those. Um, so we're always trying to come up with new ways to, to make sure that um, people don't forget about us. And uh, this was one of the ways that I thought that I could help is uh, starting the YouTube channel last year. And, uh, and then I thought um, in 2020, I could start doing more stuff. So it's a uh, thank you for, uh, for noticing. Yep. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I think at any competition, period. I mean, I worked at the Lincoln Hobby Town. And people got mad at Magic the Gathering, so I mean you're gonna get you're gonna get people upset no matter what kind of competition it is. However, uh, at the Plex recently, the last couple of years especially, uh, you really haven't seen it, and and that's one thing that I'm personally grateful for because um, you know I don't want anybody to not have fun uh, when they're racing at at, at our place. So. Uh, um, you know, it, it, like I said, I think we've been in a really good place the last uh, the last couple of years now, especially. And I hope it continues. Because I think what what people don't understand, too, is and I used to be. I probably still am, but I used to be a, a super hothead, man. Like I used to throw my cars and, and, and slam stuff all the time. And and I can still do that. But normally it's not at other people. It's at my own stupidity that that gets me mad at myself but uh i think i think what people don't realize is is there's always people watching and you know people don't always like to be around that stuff and uh and uh um you know i've had some racers tell me they don't they're not going to show up on a certain day because somebody they didn't even know yelled at them you know so we try to we try to keep that to a minimum as much as possible. I especially don't tolerate people yelling at other people. Like I said, I get mad at myself sometimes. So when that happens, it's best to just let me let me vent and then and then I'll come back and I'll be happy, super happy guy again. I've gotten better as I've gotten older. I mean I used to get pissed off if I lost, period. And now I just don't care that much. <laughs> that much I still care a little bit but I keep it inside yeah Dane you almost got me in trouble last week dude so Dane's on, and uh, uh, he was, like, rooting on for Wade to take out uh, one of the stock buggy leaders. And I was trying to be like, because I didn't want anybody to yell at anybody. 
So good job. Hey, by the way, your favorite guy is going to race tomorrow. I'll let you figure out who that is. <laughs> oh, you're not? No, oh, okay. Dane's not racing tomorrow, so it doesn't matter. No, Paxton, I don't think you do. I don't I don't think uh Paxton's ever uh ever seen who I'm discussing. Yeah, no doubt. Uh that's a good idea. People really like it when they uh, when they don't have to marshal and somebody else is out there marshaling for them. Uh this guy in particular, but I I, I usually marshal after my race, no matter what, even if I'm, uh, as long as I have somebody running the races for me, I'll go out and marshal after my race. If I have to go run a race, that's just tough. It's the way it is. I do all the work anyways. So whatever. No, Dane, that's not who I'm talking about. Uh, this guy, your favorite guy, Dane Gangler, hasn't raced in a while. But he's one of your favorite guys. Where did my heat shrink go? I just had a whole thing of heat shrink. Uh, yeah, maybe. Dude, I had a bigger piece of heat drink here and now I can't find it. How much time is left? Oh crap, seven minutes. So uh, anyways, we have 17 people watching. I'm so happy right now. Do you ever just lose something and then you don't know what you did with it? store kind of does online orders um it's all through hobbytown.com which is ran by a main so um um kind of uh if you ever wanted something uh we do take paypal so if you ever wanted something and we had it in stock um i could send you a paypal invoice and then i could ship it but uh other than that, no, we don't have our own online portal. It's all through corporateshobbytown.com. And honestly, it's probably better that way because uh, um, we're just we're sure, you know we only have a limited amount of staff, and and uh, it would uh, it would require you know like hiring somebody to have our own online portal um, for sales. 
and we just don't have that ability. So the hobbytown.com thing has worked out pretty well, I think, for Hobbytown. I do put stuff on eBay, but it's mostly old stuff. Um, you can find it. Uh, actually, it's Hobbyplex uh, Raceway on uh, on eBay, but it's all old stuff, so I don't know. But it never hurts to call and ask um, if you're looking for something, you know, in particular. Gosh darn it. My fingers are so fat. It can barely make us reach. I'm trying to have a clean setup so I can be cool like the cool kids. Instead of like a rat's nest. I am uh, I am actively looking for somebody to maybe step in and and start working on the off road instead of me. So, you know, if anybody's willing to put in the actual time it takes, I'd be willing to uh, to train you. But you can't do anything half assed. Yeah, uh, V2 uh, white in the back and V2 yellow in the front on the 5.0. Uh, Dane just asked what springs I'm running on my 22 5.0 that I've been running on carpet and uh, we're running associated V2 springs. Pretty much just going off the Frank Root setup, Frank Root setup, with a couple changes here and there for my own personal tastes. Yeah, so I've been working on my uh, uh, spring track, and uh, I don't know if I got the last couple of years. We've done stuff, uh, kind of. Um, we've done stuff that's kind of. Uh, you know, last year we did a crossover. The year before that, we had that cool uphill jump section. Um, I think I'm thinking something more traditional. So this is uh, the complete uh, drawn out, a drawn out track for uh, the spring race at the end of April. But uh, nothing set in stone just yet. I do want to have a back straight away, though. I want to change the whole thing and put in a back straight. And I want to use the elevation um, up front. A little bit more than we have so that's uh that's kind of what i'm going for so there's a little sneak peek at what i'm thinking about for uh, this spring this will go in uh april like 20th something like that okay so I've gotten my uh, my speed controllers wires all done. What I like to do is uh, uh, I I like to put heat shrink around my wires. I don't know if you can see that, it helps keep them real clean in there. Uh, summer series starts May sixteenth, May seventeenth. I've got the flyers uh, info 
into uh, Mike Garrison at Boom RC to uh, to make the uh, flyers. So I should have the flyer out for the summer series, for the spring race, and for the dirt oval race here. Hopefully within a week or two. We'll see. Um, the Armor event will be next October, and we're actually going to be doing some free bashing events this summer. Um, I'll get the dates out uh, for that soon, but uh, they're going to be on probably Saturdays and uh, they will be free events. There's going to be one a month starting in June. So June, July, August, September, and then we'll finish it off with the Arma event in October. We'll probably just do a uh, high jump, uh, the sumo table, and then we've got a couple new events that we've thought of. So that should be a lot of fun. So look, look for that free events, which is always nice. Um, okay. So it's, uh, it's 10 30. I'm going to sign off because I've been on for an hour and a half and uh, I don't want to make these too long. So the playback, you know, isn't lame. Um, but, uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back on next Thursday. I don't think I have anything going on next Thursday. Yeah, I sh we should be fine. Uh, I should have the track done by then. So um, um, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me for an hour and a half for Hobbyplex After Hours. And uh, uh, look forward to some new content this weekend for the carpet racing. And uh, we'll see if we can do something else. Uh, in the meantime, um, we'll, uh, we'll catch you later. I'm going to sign off. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends to watch next week.